Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Devers. In this video, I define the terms that are used to describe the subject matter of a work of art. And I'll show you examples of some of my two-dimensional art so you can see how the terms can be applied. Okay, let's get started. Subject matter is a formal term used to categorize two- and three-dimensional art. We use these terms, representational from the natural world, representational from the imaginative world, abstract, and non-objective. Another term we use is referent. In order to see how these terms work together, let's begin with the referent. A referent is something we see in the artwork that is recognizable from the natural world or the imaginative world. Looking at the title of a work of art may help us learn whether or not the art artist used a referent. We can see that the painting on the right, called Flamingos, has the birds as a referent. If it was entitled Number 10, then there may or may not be a referent, and it would be hard to know just from the title. We can't rely on the title alone to know if the artist intends a referent. We have to look at the artwork itself. These examples use reference from the natural world a dog, a couple on a beach, and a branch with leaves. We use the term referent when analyzing paintings, fine art prints, photographs, and sculptures. Even though these paintings are from my imagination, they have reference that are recognizable. The ducks are floating in a fantastic landscape, and the goat figure is thinking of the car she would like to have. Is it possible to see the same referent used in different subject matter? Actually, it is. Let's look at some examples of a tree that's used as a referent. Artwork that is representational always has a referent. We apply the term representation from the natural world to a wide range of realistic artwork. Here's an example of a photograph that is highly realistic and a collage that uses abstraction to manipulate reality. The referent of the tree is recognizable in both examples. Artwork that is from the artist's imagination must have some connection with the real world, otherwise we couldn't make sense of it. Even artwork that is based on fantasy, science fiction, or mythology has a referent. In this painting, the tree and the birds are recognizable referents, but the landscape is fanciful. Artists use abstraction to manipulate the referent by exaggerating features, deleting or minimizing details, or changing the form in some way. This can be used in a very subtle way, or abstraction can be quite radical, so that the entire artwork becomes highly abstracted. The tree image on the left does not have realistic details of the tree in the background. I used abstraction to modify the reference. The tree image on the right has been abstracted to such an extent that it is really just more of a symbol of a tree. Sometimes an artist wants to work with the elements and principles of design, such as line, color, texture, and shape, uh, for their own sake, without using a referent. You might look at a non-objective work and see something real in it, but that may not be the artist's intention. Sometimes the term non-representational is also used to describe work that does not use a referent. Non-objective art gives a lot of freedom to the viewer to create their own interpretation of the artwork. When a viewer asks the artist, what is it? The artist often replies, well, what does it look like to you? This is a recognition of the subjective nature of non-objective art. In these watercolors, I've had fun working with shapes and colors. I enjoy creating abstract and representational art. In this painting of the Northwest Coast, ask yourself these questions. Is there a referent? If so, is it easily recognizable? Is the referent painted in a realistic manner? Well, the reference are from the natural world, the tree, the grass, the water. 
and they're painted in a realistic manner, so they're consistent with the way we would expect to see them in the real world. So therefore, the subject matter is representational from the natural world. We can ask the same questions when we look at this watercolor of the shell. The reference are from the real world, but the shell is floating. <laughs> this is not realistic. So the details in the mountains are abstracted. Obviously, this is something from the artist's imagination. So we would say that this is representational from the imaginative world. You may find that sometimes the subject matter of a work of art seems to be somewhere between abstraction and representation. In that case, you simply need to describe how abstraction is used. In this painting, the reference are recognizable. The ocean, the people, the dog, the hills. I have used abstraction to minimize details in the figures. In fact, everything has received this treatment so that the scene has a soft appearance. The subject matter of this painting is representational from the natural world, but abstraction has been used to manipulate the reference and minimize the details. The colors, lines, and shapes in this painting create a design without a referent. I was interested in using a more intuitive approach without referring to anything recognizable. As a result, the subject matter is non-objective and open to interpretation by the viewer. You might see this image as a cave, a nest, or maybe it's expressing emotions such as struggle or hope or searching. As a non-objective work, it's open to different interpretations. What do you see? So let's review. When you need to analyze the subject matter of a work of art, start by asking these questions. Does the artwork include a referent that is recognizable in the natural world? Has the artist created artwork from his or her imagination? Is abstraction used to manipulate the referent? If so, how has it been used? Is the artwork non-objective without a referent to the natural or imaginative world? Remember, art with a referent is representational from the natural world or the imaginative world. An abstraction can be used to manipulate the referent in some way. Non-objective art does not have a referent because it uses the elements and principles of design to create an image or object for its own sake. I hope you have enjoyed these examples and I hope they help you understand how to analyze the subject matter of a work of art. If you would like to see more of my artwork, check out my blog at the address on the screen, karendevers.com. <laughs> have fun looking at art.